It's the Stand On It Podcast. It's true. So I want y'all to look at this picture with me. It's a picture of yours truly. This is young truth. Well, should I say is at this point. But if you're looking at the picture, I want you to pay attention to something. Uh, I'm going to give y'all a description of what's going on. So <clears throat> at this point, I'm probably about 450, 477. Uh, 477 was my highest debts. The highest that I remember getting weighed at. I was bigger than that, I'm pretty sure. But I was not able to get weighed until I went to a special clinic to be weighed. Because a regular scale at a regular doctor's office, it can't weigh. I think it's only like 350, so that wasn't even an option. So if you look at the rundown here, uh, I got on a 6X polo, uh, probably 6X vest, and probably a 60 to 62 inch waist pants, you know, and anybody with a brain would say, hey, he, you're overweight, or I'm weighed down. You can see that, right? But things you can't see. Let me tell you some things you can't see. At this point, this probably was one of my highest watermarks as far as money go. I was getting a lot of paper, like had, had money lined up. But the things you can't see as well. I was in a marriage I should not have been in. Um, I was addicted to drinking lean. I was addicted to alcohol. Uh, I'm taking pills. Um, All of this stuff. I was weighed down. Yeah, weighed down. But see, sometimes when we think about being weighed down, we start thinking about, oh, I'm weighed down from the standpoint of what people can see. No, not all the time. Uh, and when I was just looking at this picture, it made me think about that. Like, I'm really sitting here weighed down versus what y'all think y'all could see, but you had no idea what I was going through at this point. I was hiding a lot with a lot of different drugs and different vices that I should not have been hiding. But I wanted to share that as my story because that's what we're going to talk about on this episode, being weighed down, what that really means. Um, how men can help with preventing that, um, turning that around, you know, um, what it means to be weighed down. Um, so some of the things that are weighing people down, and you probably are completely not even aware of it, can't tell your kids no. Now you're getting weighed down because it's like you're stressing with yourself. You may not have the funds to do what they want you to do. But you don't want to tell them no. So you go go add debt or figure out a way you can do it and add all the stress on yourself. You got to have the latest and greatest. New iPhone just came out. I got to make sure I get that. The new drawings are coming out. I got to make sure I get those. Did you see the new car that they Yeah, I got to get that. All the time just adding stress to yourself, weighing yourself down. Entertainment. Yeah. Can you believe that people are still making decisions to not pay a bill and go to the club? That's still happening in 2023. I put some on it. I let it go late, pay the late fee. I pay it next week. I do this, but I'm going to the club tonight. Saying that out loud, you hear how stupid that sound? Just just saying it out loud. I'm not going to take care of my livelihood. I'm going to go out so I can dance and get drinks and hopefully... Um, I can either, if I'm a man, I can get a woman to leave with me, or if you're a woman, you can get a man to fund your drinks for the night. Stuff that's weighing you down. Stress. T 
tell you a story. Went to a liquor store that's close to my house in uh, Malden. <clears throat> I go in the liquor store. I see a dude just sitting in the car. He kind of got his seat tilted back a little bit. He just chilling. I'm like, my man chilling. It is what it is. Go in the liquor store and come back out. Another dude then came from next door and he talking to him. He like, bro, you still out here? He said, man, yeah, boy, I'm just sitting here trying to get my mind right before I go back to the house. And listen, man, <laughs> that's another thing that I'm saying. Men, you have to get back to me and men again. What What's happening now is these memes and things are giving men out. It's, it's, it's stopping us from being accountable to what we should. Because you'll see a meme like, oh, men's feelings, care t- uh, men's feelings matter too. Duh. Everybody's feelings matter. But they position that to men like, yeah, it's okay to be really sad. And that's when you see men sitting in the, liquor, in the car at the liquor store for two hours because they don't want to go home. That that type of stuff, they scared to meet head on. Be a man, I'm not go my peace is not gonna be disturbed in my place of dwelling. It's not. This is my castle. I'm not gonna go drive to a liquor store and sit in the car because I'm scared to come home and deal with you, weighing itself down. Relationships. Go straight with the liquor store. But listen here. I seen somebody post and, and I know this this woman can't keep no man. She just can't. She's been happy for the last, I think, week just posting shit. And I'm like, it's just a matter of time. And it was just a matter of time. Same thing I said. Same cycle keeps repeating itself. You never address what you did to make the situation go wrong. It's always what somebody else did. And this goes for men and women. And I'm holding myself accountable. I've been in relationships where I have been the problem. In the moment, I didn't think I was the problem, and I never admitted in the moment I was the problem. Looking back on it with growth, I was the problem. But so many of y'all keep jumping from relationship to relationship, trying to find true love, but you're not ever accepting the fact that you're the problem. My dad used to tell me this. If you keep going somewhere and the same problem occurs, Everywhere you go, who you think the problem is? Yeah. If it's a problem everywhere you go, it's a problem every relationship you get into. Where's the problem? It's time to do some soul searching. The problem probably lies with you. Uh, But again, when you don't address it, you become weighed down. Um, And when you're weighed down, it makes it hard for you to move. You try and do whatever you can to mask the fact that you're weighed down. Um, and we're starting to really see this now. Um, and this, again, this is why I'm not, I'm not letting up on men. We, we got to be better. Um, you're starting to see men. And on my last episode, I uh, told men about how we need to stop listening to these old rappers and these retired athletes. Because how they're acting right now is absolutely embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Let's show you what I'm talking about. Let me show you this video. And uh, a lot of y'all will say, hey, this is, this is unk. All right. And I had started like kind of buying into that a couple years ago, calling Shannon Shaw. Oh, unk. This is what unk posted. You know, unk is really the new term for OG, if y'all didn't know that. That's really what that means now, OG, unk. But... I've always said just because somebody is older than you, that doesn't mean that they're an OG. Um, A real OG is going to carry himself in a certain way. But when I show you all this and then when I tie it all together, it's going to make sense. So just follow me. Here is Unk responding to his co-host on Undisputed saying that football player Tom Brady is better than him. Uh, I'm just going to play the clip And then we'll talk about it Here's the clip Hey 
Now, every time I call something into question, I'm jealous. No, Skip, I did. Well, what I, I never did. said you were jealous of Baker Mayfield. Skip, I did what I did. You make it seem like I was a bum. I'm in the effing Hall of Fame. Okay, I so got three what? Super Bowls. So what? So what? He's way better than you were. I'm better way than you. Better. Skip, what the- I got to see what you do. You take personal shots. No, when you, for I, don't, I don't take personal Skip. shots. Oh, you started it. Time out. You would take a personal shot at me. I didn't so, take oh, a personal shot at you. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? You would take a personal shot. Put your glasses back on. Can I finish? You're willing to take a personal shot at me to say this man is better than me because I say he's playing bad this year? Well, because you 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 just Go ahead. you disrespect him. It's it's just so. It, so it's you, beneath, you know what? It's beneath your you dignity. You would disrespect me to no. support him. No, well, I'll, I'll support him over anybody because he's the greatest. <clears throat> so let me say this. I haven't watched. I used to be a. I used to watch first take. This is how big a sports fan I am. I used to watch first take and record undisputed, or either watch undisputed and record first take. So after I watch one, I go straight to the other. I haven't watched first take in years, sitting down watching the episode, and I haven't watched uh, undisputed in almost a year, sitting down watching the full episode. Because uh, Shannon Sharp and Stephen A. Smith, the way they conduct themselves, man, it's, it's sad. Shannon Sharp, let me tell you this. When Shannon Sharp was with CBS, I was a Shannon Sharp fan when he was on that. I didn't care about, I hated when he left the show, whatever happened on that. That's not even for me to speak on. The role they had Shannon in on that show, he was phenomenal in it because he's a Hall of Famer and he knows football. So when he left and went to Undisputed, Now this is this mainstream media, again, that has changed. You got all these conservatives, and now they're, hey, here's the script, and we need you to go on this programming. We need you to talk about this. We need you to do that. So now our unk, our OG, can't be unk anymore, you know? And this is when you start seeing this type of behavior. But I'm going to explain to you why Shannon Sharp behaves like this. My dad was a diabetic. And you probably like, what the hell does that have to do with Shannon Sharp acting crazy with Skip Bayless? My dad was a diabetic, so he couldn't drink a lot of sugar. So my dad used this thing called, look at the screen, we're going to put the picture up, Equal. This is what Equal looks like. Equal is a sweetener. It's artificial, but it's the same color as sugar. It's the exact same color as sugar. It's just got a different taste. Shannon Sharp thinks because he has money, he's equal to Skip Bayless. He wants to be considered his equal. He thinks his shit is just as sweet as Skip as far as what he brings to the media. That's why he said, I do this show with you every day, and you aside with him. Come on, man. That's why I've been saying, like, we have to get out of that mindset That for it to be right, it's got to be attached to white. It don't have to be like that. And why are we looking to say, I want to be looked at as being equal to Tom Brady or, or Skip Bayless? It don't even matter the color. Be such a good person, no matter whether you white, black, that people want to be you. They want to be considered your equal. It ain't looking down from Skip Bayless' standpoint that, oh, if I, if I want to be equal to Sa- Shannon Sharp, I'm looking down because that's a black man. No, be such a good person, it don't matter your color. That's how you equalize. But he wants to be equal from a standpoint of, man, I don't, I don't, I got, and you heard him. I'm in there for Hall of Fame. Voice cracking and all that shit, man. But ain't nobody go call that out because, oh, this unk. This old unk. So, what happened was <clears throat> Skip Bayless, keep the old charade going. Skip Bayless posted a tweet. If anybody was watching football the other night, uh, De- De- DeMar Hamlin, uh, he suffered a hit where he went into cardiac arrest and they had to perform CPR on the field. During the time, Skip Bayless put out a tweet. The tweet last time I looked at it had 130 million views. People calling to cancel Skip Bayless over this. Oh, he's got to be canceled. 
Let me tell you why y'all are absolutely wrong. And ain't nobody go hold y'all accountable for this. Everybody go go along to get along. And let me tell you what happened. Um, Shannon Sharp didn't come to work the next day. Oh, I'm boycotting. I'm mad. Skip went too far. Athletes start weighing in. Oh, we got to cancel Skip Bayless. He needs to be canceled. People start talking about, uh, I think it was Matt Barnes. I didn't save people from whipping Skip Bayless' ass in the past. Like, bro, you go get some. Anyone who goes up and whoops Skip Bayless' ass, bro, you a clown. You go get some points for that. That's Come on, bro. Skip Bayless. But here's the thing. So Shannon didn't come to work after the tweet goes out. But the next day he comes to work, he wants to mention it. So he was like, I hope Skip takes the tweet down. Skip's like, I stand on what I said. I'm not taking that down. So he goes on another tirade. But what ain't nobody going to call out, Shannon Sharp not offended by that tweet. He's using this as an opportunity because he's still mad that reality was slapping him in the face when Skip told him, you're not equal. That's what he's still mad about. When subconsciously, Skip said, you're not equal to Tom Brady. Shannon can't figure out why. I'm a Hall of Famer. I'm rich. I'm on TV. Why you don't consider me his equal? We got to get out of that mind frame. Get back to being men. We not finna be on TV arguing about that. We not finna be off TV arguing about that. Oh, he better than you. Okay. What does that mean, man? You know? So then when we react this way, here's the tweet. And I'm going to break down. And this probably going to offend some people. But, hey, man, this is what we're doing here. We, we, we making men again. Here's the tweet that Skip Bayless Tweet it, and I'm going to tell you why it offended so many. <clears throat> let, me t- let me read it to you how I read it when I initially saw it. No doubt the NFL is considering postponing the rest of this game. But how? This late in the season, a game of this magnitude is crucial to the regular season outcome, which suddenly seems so irrelevant. That's journalism. The pause for dramatic effect. The hyphenation, the dot, 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 let you think while I get another thought. You know why so many people was offended? And that's why I tried to tell y'all, stop listening to these retired athletes in mainstream media. How many of y'all went to school with a star athlete? I did. How smart was this star athlete? Not very. How much work did they have to do in comparison to what everybody else was doing? Not a lot. They were good. They were a star athlete. So now these are the people you put in front of the camera, and you want them to understand a tweet like this. Let me tell you how they read this tweet. No doubt the NFL is considering postponing the rest of this game. How? Fuck you mean how? That's all they got to. Didn't pay attention to any of the, the pronunciations, um, any of that. Then none of that. Just went off. See, there's a lack of understanding. But see, instead of holding yourself accountable and saying, oh, I understood it wrong. Or maybe I need to increase my knowledge on the situation. We're not comparing apples to apples. Skip is a real journalist. Shannon Sharp is a retired athlete. Doubling as a journalist. So he's not going to understand certain things Skip say, and that's most of the public, because everything's been so dumbed down. I didn't get offended immediately when I saw that tweet, because that's how I read it. But, I mean, athletes coming out, he needs to be counseled out. Des Bryant? And what, what really gets me, and I, I've talked about this as well, when people... Forget what they've done. Let me give you an example before I even speak to Des Bryant. Dude told me one time, called me and told me somebody was a rat. I listened to him, got off the phone with him, and I'm like, yo, 
Buddy completely forgot. He told <laughs> Bro, you are a rat too. But people will do things and put it behind them like it never happened. They don't want to own it. They don't want to look and acknowledge it. Like, oh, no, that didn't happen. What? Bro, the, I still got the screenshot of the paperwork. But you calling me telling me somebody else a rat? There's Brian. You talking about Council Skip Bayless? Didn't you punch your mama? Bro, you put hands on your mama. Or some family member. If I'm wrong, somebody correct me in the comments. You put hands on some female family member of yours. But you talking about Council Skip Bayless? For that tweet that y'all aren't intelligent enough to read and understand? We got to cut this out, man. We have to cut it out. We have to cut it out. Men, that's a lot of sensitivity. You're using someone else's uh, perceived wronging of someone else to further your agenda. You're trying to bury Skip Bayless, man. And I I like uh, some of the commentary you do, but this ain't no real shit right here. And ain't nobody go call that out. But let's keep it a bean. This ain't no real shit. For you to get that offended at this man and talk about what he doing and, and, we, and we not doing this and he needs to take it down. Come on, man. We better than that. We getting back to being men. And there's nothing wrong with if you don't consider yourself equal. You shouldn't want to consider yourself equal to somebody else. Like I said, be such a person that other people will want to look at you like, boy, I want to. That's, yeah, that's what I aspire to be. That right there. You know, that's what you need to worry about. Um, but when you don't get these things fixed, you don't hold yourself accountable, that's when that heart becomes weighed down. And when that heart becoming weighed down, now you're looking at health problems. Why do you think you'll see somebody who you like, boy, they look like the bill of health, and they just drop dead? They look like the bill of health. You don't know the stress that they got weighing on them. Running their pressure, causing heart disease, all of that, stroking out, all of that type stuff. So you can't go by what you're seeing. You can't. And you really can't go by what you're hearing, not from this mainstream media and these men who don't want to be men. And just going along to get along, who's sitting at the uh, liquor store in the car for two hours. Mm -mm. That's not manly. We can't do that, man. We got to change this. But... Another thing, you know, and, and again, I'm transparent. I go to therapy. I go to therapy. I used to go once a week. Well, when I started, I went twice a week. Used to go once a week, now I go once a month. But when I started therapy, I, I learned I had a lot of undiagnosed trauma. And it's a lot of us men walking around with undiagnosed trauma. And as you're walking around with that undiagnosed trauma, that's turning into now you having bad relationships with people. You holding grudges against people. You're resenting people. You come you're becoming detached from people. You don't want to have any confrontation because now you're just sowing your own thoughts and emotions. You don't even want to function around people. So you start letting people run over you. That's because you're weighed down. That's why you gotta fix that. Luke 21, 34 through 36 talks about. Do not let your heart become weighed down with overeating, heavy drinking, anxieties of life. Because we're worried about all these things. And it says in that day, destruction could be instantly upon you. But see your heart weighed down. You're not addressing what you need to address. You're looking at the wrong people for guidance. And these people you're looking at for guidance, guess what? Their heart's weighed down too. They're just trying to make it look good. They on TV, and you assume they on TV, they rich. You don't know what kind of demons they got going on. You don't know what they had to do to get on TV. Do you know how scary that is? I don't want to be on TV from the horror stories I hear. What you got to do to get on TV? What you got to do to become famous? So these people are weighed down, so I'm starting to understand why a lot of them are starting to act out the way they are. But when they act out, we got to call them out on it. And, and they need to be accountable 
to realize I have a platform that's impacting and being impressionable on the minds of millions of people. I got to get my act together. But big corporation, they're not going to let them get their act together. Because once they start getting their act together, we, we got what we want. We need you to go. You're not talking how we want you to talk no more. You're not doing the things that we want you to do. You're not tearing down um, your culture. You're not being overly sensitive. You're not uh, allowing yourself to be castrated and uh, willingly taking your balls off as well because you don't want to do or stand up for anything that's worth anything. That's just where we are, man. And then the last thing that happens, been a victim of that too. Then you turn... To drugs, alcohol, and that's never going to turn out well. Chain smoking cigarettes, that's never going to turn out well. Um, And you're talking to somebody who's done both. Drugs, chain smoking cigarettes, all of it. And I'm not saying I'm proud of it. But what I'll tell you is this. Guess what I did? I stopped. I was able to stop. And see, that's the thing. People make every excuse. Oh, I can't stop. I, I just can't stop smoking. Every time I stop smoking cigarettes, guess what, Guess how I did it? Cold turkey. And just never went back to it. Like, shit, I'm, I'm done with that. And, and when I said I was done, guess what? I was done. There was no need to, to go back to any of that. But we make ex- excuses as to why I, I just... Nah, I can't, I can't stop. This is just too much. But I got this video I'm going to share. Um, it was from the Joe Rogan podcast, and it was with uh, Nikki Glazer. Um, and she was talking about her addictions that she had to smoking cigarettes and then also with alcohol. Let's listen to her first clip first. It was like the best part about being sick. If you're going to find the best part about being sick, it's that people feel sorry for you. You get babied a little bit. You get a nurturing from your friends and family that you don't get when you're healthy. But when you're hungover, no one gives you that. So you're sick and you don't even get the only good thing about being sick, which is people feeling sorry for you. Everyone's like, you piece of shit. You did this to yourself. So I was like <laughs> in the shower, in a in the fetal position, thinking... Uh, This is how I should feel if I'm dying. Like, I really don't want to feel this bad unless I am on my way out. So I'm not doing this anymore. And I read a book and I was done. And I mean, she is, well, she used to be a party animal. But you're looking at a party, used to be a party animal. And there has to come a time where you're like, man, you know what? This going this hard all the time don't even include the fact that I'm older and I just don't have the ability to go as hard as I was going, even if I wanted to go as hard as I used to go. Let's put into perspective that I learned that there's no need to be doing all that. It don't take all that to do what I'm doing. Uh, I don't have to be on all these pills. The only addiction that was hard for me to, to just cut cold turkey was Xanax. Everything else, I just cut it cold turkey. And I had to, to get off that Xanax, man. Like, my life was spinning out of control. But see, we'll come up with every excuse. Oh, I can't quit. I can't stop. I done smoked all these years. I, done, I come from, you'll hear us say this type of stuff in our culture. I come from a family of drinkers. What? (laughs) This is the type of shit we celebrate. I'm from a family of drinkers. Not I'm from a family of educated people. I'm from a family of uh, millionaires. I'm from a family of successful business people. I'm from a family of drinkers. Damn everything else y'all talking about. We drinks over here. And see, that's that way down. You got to ask yourself, why am I really doing all this? I had to ask myself that. Why am I taking these drugs? Why am I drinking all this liquor? I was hiding from something. Undiagnosed trauma. That's what's going on. Listen to what she said about smoking. You can die from it, obviously. But with tobacco, it's part of their propaganda 
to tell you that it's hard to quit smoking. Mm -hmm. They are the ones pushing that method or message, which seems like why would they tell people it's hard? But they're doing that because if it's hard, you won't quit. So that has been their message to be like, it's so hard to quit smoking. It's so hard when really it's not. It's not? No. Come on, man. Like, why are we this oblivious? That's part of their campaign. Oh, you you can't do it. It's too hard. And, boy, listen here. If you don't want somebody to do something, tell them it's hard. I done had people who think, oh, I can be a podcaster. I can be a rapper. We make it look easy. This is hard work. Think of the content you got to sit down and come up with. Think of the people behind the scenes, the camera, editing, all of that stuff. This ain't easy. And they hop into it. That's why they don't last. But I ain't know all this was involved. Or they hop in there and want to do music, do one song and it don't take off. And they done spent money on it, $40. But boy, that's too big an investment, that 40 I don't want to do it no more. It's too hard. She just told y'all what they're doing. Tell them it's too hard. And what you going to do? Boy, and that's why you hear people say, I don't think I ever be able to quit smoking. What? I don't think, you've already just ring yourself out. I don't think I ever be able to quit smoking. That's what they want you to think. That's part of their programming. And see, that's why it's so important for men to be men, because a lot of us, we're, we're rubbing shoulders all the time with women who are looking for guidance. And sometimes they'll tell you when they get a, if, if you, as a man, I'm going to tell you this in closing. <clears throat> if you want to know what kind of man you are, what kind of character you have, and how you're viewed by women, now, I'm not talking about attraction, any of that. Go around a group of women and see what kind of stories they share with you. See if they open up to you. See if they ask you for advice. If they just cracking jokes with you and taking shots, they don't look at you as a man, a character, or anybody of relevance. They're not sharing anything with you. Like, I, I have a lot of homegirls. And some people say, oh, you ain't got homegirl that. No. My girl can vouch for this. I have a lot of homegirls that we have never had any interaction with. You know why? Because they know I'm a man of high character. They know I'm going to give them good advice because when I'm looking at them, I'm looking at them as either my sister or in some cases I'm looking at them as like my daughter. Because it be even some young chicks that will ask me for advice. Hey, what you think about this? Or what, what, what's your suggestion? Or this dude told me this. What you think about it? If they're not asking you that, bro, go reevaluate yourself. Come over here and be part of this program that we making men again. Let's do that. Like, if you really want to know, go be around a group of women. When they having a, a woman empowerment, find a way to get invited and go. If they having a kickback, find a way to get invited and go. If you don't come out of there knowing what dude she is dealing with or was dealing with, if you don't know uh, whose baby daddy ain't shit, if you don't know... Bro, they don't look at you as anybody irrelevant. And that's part of the problem with society. That women are not looking at men as the way they used to as men. And that's a problem. They feel like they got to do it on their own. And then instead of men saying, you don't even look right in this role and holding women accountable, to be like, no, I'm, I'm going to run the show here. I got it. I need you to be my support system. Because that's the thing. Women are have a good woman. She how you think about stuff you never even thought about. She be that helper that put things in perspective for you that you never even thought about. The universe, the world requires balance. If we got both people fighting to be in control in the relationship, or fighting to be in control in the family dynamic, 
There's no balance. That's why it doesn't work. There's no balance. So, I want y'all to think about, stop letting that stuff weigh your heart down. You know, get rid of that because at any given time, your life could be over with. And you've been weighed down. I shedded a whole bunch of weight, physical weight. But I didn't find peace till I got my mental right. So I started addressing the things that were weighing me down that y'all couldn't see. Not the 477, almost 500 pounds. The things y'all couldn't see. My addictions. My undiagnosed traumas. My poor relationships. My lack of accountability. See, all of these things were weighing me down. And I felt like I was lighter because I shed a lot of physical weight. But until you address those internal things, you go forever be weighed down. So, hey, hope you enjoyed the show tonight. Um, Keep liking, subscribe, rating, reviewing. Um, I'm getting a lot of good feedback about it, especially online. People are interacting. Hey, man, I'm just trying to reach whoever. If it reaches you and touches you, I thank you. Um, I've gotten some feedback from people like, hey, man, really enjoying the show. Um, I appreciate y'all. I'm going to keep doing this. But things that I feel like we need to hear that's going to help us to continue to move forward. Because people are so stuck in the past and want to move backwards or be stagnated. No, let's move forward. And the only way we could do that, we got to get rid of that dead weight. It's the Stand On It podcast. It's true. We live here at the Gym Complex, produced by content creators. Audio episode drop on Friday, all major platforms. Video episode drop on I Say Podcast Network, YouTube on Thursdays. Until next time, it's truth. We out.